you wake up and you go to social media, you don't see the devil. <laughs> but when you open the Bible, <laughs> you see him alive. And other instances. Look at some of the times that you have not read the Bible. Just think about it. What happened? I normally challenge and say, did you take breakfast? Imagine you found time to take breakfast, but you didn't find to read even one chapter. Or even to do other things. So, um, the Bible brings us at the center. We are able to speak the same language. That is the beauty of the, of the Word of God. So, today we want to transit to lesson three, and uh, it has been titled, Train Yourself to be Godly. Okay, train, train yourself to be godly. And we are going to pray, even as we look at this lesson. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we bow before you this morning. We are glad that uh, you have availed your grace to sustain us as we continue to develop the discipline of reading the Bible. We want to, to be like uh, the times of Ezra. The Bible says that he was well versed with the scriptures in that he would study, he was devoted to the study and the teachings of the Bible. At one time he even uh, read the Bible the whole day and people stood and after that they became remorseful and repented. This is your word. Lord, we invite that the Holy Spirit will continue to reveal yourself and open the eyes of our hearts that we may not only understand but we will also do it so that we become fruitful Christians in the name of Jesus. This morning, we want to invite you to lead us through this session as I um, teach this lesson. I pray that you will help me, O oh God, to speak with conviction and with clarity and simplicity. Thank you, because this is your very word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, <laughs> Train yourself to be godly. And our foundational scripture, which we are going to dwell much on it during this lesson, is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. And uh, the Bible says, this was going to be one of our uh, scripture memory this month. The Bible says, have nothing to do with godless and um, have, have nothing to do with godless maids and old wife tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, godliness has value for all things, holding the promise for both the present life and the life to come. That's First Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. It is starting by saying have nothing. These were instructions given to Timothy. And um, early along, we we see Paul instructing Timothy in different ways. When we think about the aspect of training, training is different from teaching, and we shall see the differences shortly. But I want to say that when we think about godliness, we are saying, train yourself to be godly. Who is training you? It's, I am training myself. It is not the responsibility of God, it is not the responsibility of the pastor or your mentor. It is it Train yourself to be good. I have seen two things so far that solely depend on me as far as training is concerned. Uh, the, the first one is godliness. It all comes from me. If I go to South Africa today, what is going to tell that I'm a Christian is godliness. If someone comes here, we don't embrace anyone from the first sight. We need to take some time to study and know the person. The way someone talks, the way someone behaves. Um, that is a story that uh, I was told. It's a few years ago. A pastor came from Nigeria and um, he had gone to preach in Mary. And in that case, uh, when they were going to take meals, 
So something weird happened, such that when they were, the, the, the story goes, it's a true story, the person who was telling me, because it was out of experience, he was telling me, this pastor, we went to take meals after preaching in a crusade, and the, the person who was hosting them prepared, prepared 15 chapatis and some stew. And therefore, there were about five people. So this pastor looked at chapatis and everything that was on the table and said, and told the people, now, uh, for me, I don't eat food, I work on food. And so, let me work on it and then we, you wait. Do you know he cleared everything? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you. The, 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 preacher was, the preacher was never invited again. <laughs> now, simple things like sharing, like contentment, and like cons considering others. I'm talking in the aspect of godliness. You know, simple things can simplify the way we love God. It's not how much you talk. Uh, now, the decision to be made for whoever wants to be a godly person, it depends on you. It's yours. You find me in town, the way I do things, some of you know, you know, we, we live around and this is our nearest town. Many times we come to print materials, we do shopping here and there. So, there is a way people will know this is a pastor. You, we get into vehicles, some abusive languages. What we, will tell that I'm a godly person? If the way I have trained myself, even in the things that we train our children, there are things you can't do for your child. We have a, now a, a, a two, about two and a half year old daughter. We didn't come with her today. But we have seen her grow, and we have been very intentional to train her in doing some things, including eating. Our daughter ate at a very early age. After six months, we didn't made we didn't make any any complicated food. We ate, she ate what we ate. And we have seen her appreciating that. And through that, that training, if she refuses to take food, the mother cannot take food on her behalf. And tell her, Tabi, now you are satisfied. I have taken. Can that happen? No. We train, they do it. We don't do. We teach them, we train them. There's a very wonderful book that we, we have been studying and uh, written goal to train up a child. And there's some principles there that are so amazing that we can actually, we can't do things for our children. We train them and that is how they learn to fight for themselves. Even in the Christian context. We can't hold or we cannot do things for our children for a long time. We train them to go and fight, to defend the faith for themselves. At the end of the day, they will live. Now, this scripture says that physical training, when we realize that we have some, let's talk about weight, for example. When if I realize I'm getting overweight, I have to do what? And that physical exercise, is it a sweet one? It's not. Yeah, we have to run on a daily basis. That is training, physical training for fitness. But Paul is saying, Physical training is of some value. We are doing so many things on, for physical training. Many, there are many things we do in training children, even training ourselves for physical purposes. For the things that are temporary. But he is comparing with godliness and saying, but godliness has value for all things. Holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. That's so, that's beautiful. In, in fact, imagine the training we are doing, the godly training we do, it is for the benefit for both now and for tomorrow. When I was reading Psalm 32, no, Psalm chapter 22, verse 30 and 31, the Bible says, posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, for he has done it. That is a testimony to me. Posterity are children who will be born far much later. Our grandchildren. Posterity. And David is saying, posterity will serve him. That's the confidence he had. Posterity will serve him. 
future generation will be told about the Lord. That they will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn. For he has done it. How are we going to preserve our godliness that our children, our grandchildren are going to enjoy? What are we going to pass on to the coming generation? It all comes from our intentionality, our intentional practice, our ability to subdue our bodies. Godliness is a lifestyle that conforms to God's standard as laid out in the scriptures and delights in pleasing him at all times. It is a standard and, and uh, it cannot be simplified. When the Bible says, do not steal, there is no provision to say you can steal food when you are hungry. The Bible says, do not steal and it is full stuff. Okay, you can communicate, please. He was saying the choir members, I guess we are supposed to go and come back. Okay, do we have the choir members? Maybe three or five minutes and please come back before the lesson ends so that you don't miss out. So I am saying that godliness is a lifestyle that conforms to God's standard as laid out in the scriptures. It delights in pleasing Him at all times. It's a standard. God has given us His word and we cannot simplify to suit our situation. Do you know, especially we Bible readers, please be careful as you read the Bible. Because you can read the Bible to take what you want. You can go to read the Bible. Sometimes one person was sharing every time we met, he was sharing an insight and telling. He was always talking about obedience. And one day I asked him, are you reading the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> All the insights you are sharing is about obedience. I actually told him, no, you are not reading the Bible. What you share, there is no one obedience. Don't talk about what is not here. If the Bible is telling you, like today we are, we are talking about give. There are people who don't like the topic on giving. <laughs> there are people who don't like about forgiveness. Or when you know there are people I will never forgive. You are telling me forgiveness. And someone hurt me. So we need to be careful. We can read the Bible to pick what we want. And that's why those who don't read the Bible, who don't do CBR, who don't read consistently per se, some people comfort themselves when they're in problem. Psalm 23. The Lord is mine. I shall not. You know, they even go to say, the Bible says, even God says, God help those who help themselves. And it's not in the Bible. So comforting themselves in using some statements that are not biblical. So our focus in this lesson is developing the godliness called the discipline of reading God's word or meeting with God on a daily basis. Let's look at differences, some vital differences between teaching and training. The difference between teaching and training. I'll give three uh, differences. The first one on teaching, so if you're writing, you, you can... Um, Right, maybe teaching, teaching and then training. Teaching, number one is teaching is giving information about something. Teaching is giving information about something, like we are teaching, giving information about how to read the Bible. But it is you to train yourself. We have never called any one of you, chairman. I, 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 I don't even have your number. I've never called you to work you. And I may not do that. <laughs> Why? We teach, you do it, right? Yes. Teaching is giving information about some, someone else. But we train ourselves with the guidance of an instructor. Teaching is done by someone else that is on teaching. 
But as far as training is concerned, we are saying we train ourselves with the guidance of an instructor. And that is what we call, we are calling this CBR training. We are instructing you. We are instructing you on how to do it. And that's why on, every, on a monthly basis we are asking you, how far are you? How far are you in reading? How is the experience? Did you wake up? So, such like, like tomorrow, not even tomorrow, I think you started on Monday reading three chapters. You already transited, right? Yes, those are now the instructions. We instruct you, we guide you. So, we are saying that we train ourselves with the guidance of an instructor. Sadly, there is a way we can we can give people, we can tell people what we are not doing. It is sad when you tell someone this food is very sweet and you have never tasted it. And you are telling the person, do what? Eat. Some people can even talk about CBR is very good and you have, you have, you have never done. We do have someone. Life actually are transformed through personal testimony. When you can tell and say, CPR transformed, but it's not a walk in the park. You must pay the cost of beating the body. The reality, when you came, we introduced you to Hebrews 12:11, <laughs> uh, And you were wondering, I wish he told us he will be blessed. <laughs> but he told you, no discipline seems blessed at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who are betrayed by it. So you are telling us it is painful. You are telling us to experience pain. Ah, no, no, no. no. We want something? <laughs> Sweet. But up to this far, I believe already you have, you have better testimony. The third one is teaching. Teaching takes a short time. Teaching takes a short time. But uh, training takes a much longer period. Teaching takes a short time. But training takes much a longer period. Um, because you still have to keep revisiting. Because that, in fact, teaching may, in a way, depend on how much your ability to absorb information. And that brings the balances in, in the class setting. When you teach children, uh, those, and you give them an exam, you see those who perform depend on their personal efforts to remember. Even in scripture memory, chances are those who did not take, who did not, were not able to catch anything, they spent some little time in practicing. But those who gave uh, more efforts, they would actually, they can't forget they had it. So training takes much longer period. Imagine training your body. You are training your body to adjust to something new. To adjust to severe. To adjust even to in the, in, the, in the athletics. A coach will only give instructions but the person to train themselves are the athletic, athletes themselves. Yeah. Now we want to look at again three principles. Our point is how to pursue godly training. How to pursue godly training. And we want to look at three principles from the sports world. We have three principles from the sports. There is a way, especially in Paul's um, letters, and even in his communication, many times he used the sports to communicate a message. He used the real life situations, what we, what we do. And we are going to examine 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. We are going to draw three principles from the sports world and we will look at the application in CPI. Uh, three principles. I'm going to recite 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. And then we will look at the three principles. Because it's also one of the scripture memories this month. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 
verse 24 to 27, this is what Paul is saying that, do you not know that in a race, all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get a prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do this to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not fight like a man beating the air. Therefore, I do not uh, fight like a man beating the air. I do not run endlessly. No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. Look, he's taking us to the world of athletics. He's saying, do you not know that all time are but only one gets the price? But only on one gets the price. Then he tells us, um, those who run, they get a price that will not last. But for us, we will get a price that will last forever. Now let's look at three principles from this scripture. Um, from the sports world. We, we remember, I don't know how much remembers that athlete who from Tanzania, he went and ran, and after running, before he completed the race, what happened? He fell. So the doctors came and attended him for some, some a few minutes, and others had actually finished running, and they had been celebrated. <coughs> when he felt like I am now fit, he ran and finished the rounds. And when the media people came and were asking him, what happened that you, you ran and the, the competition had finished. You know what he said? He said, my country has not sent me to just run. He, he, they sent me to finish the race. He made the news even more than the number one. <laughs> you know that people, you start something and you don't finish. So the first principle is run in such a way as to get the price. Run in such a way. What is the implication of this? This implies that he obeys the rules and runs as fast as possible. Obey the rules. Uh, I don't know whether I told you that uh, in my during the first time I, I read, especially in high school, when I was in primary, I used to run a uh, short distance. When I went to high school, I think I had not understood the rules very well. So we went for a very tough competition. I left so fast 100 meters. And when I realized I had left others so much behind, when I was about to finish, I joined the second lane and I finished. What did that mean? <laughs> when I was wondering, why am I not celebrated? And when they were awarding, they awarded the second person and not me. I did obey the rules. I joined. The other person play. So we run in such a way as to get the price. It means practice CBR according to the training rules. Make sure you are well conversant with the rules. Don't miss out. So that you will be coming. If you miss on instructions, let me tell you the sec uh, something that, that may, may make you even to lose passion for CBR. You may come today and you are hearing people are in First Samuel. And you are wondering, First Samuel? And I'm in Genesis chapter, chapter 48. <laughs> because when people are reading three chapters, you are still reading? What? You miss the instructions. <laughs> so you may feel discouraged and say, no, I'll leave this thing. And that is how the enemy works, to kill the passion for CBI. If you miss on simple instructions, there is a way the enemy manipulates things, at least we saw, on how he manipulates the natural phenomena to, uh, and comes in our real situations. Something small that is temporary can kill your passion. So we are saying practice CBR according to the training rules, analyzing, systematic Bible reading, prayerful meditation, and all those. All the course instructions in this reference card that we gave you. All the instructions are here. None of you, in a way, has any excuse. If you read this, you will understand even the progression. When one card ends, you transit to another with new adjustments. You automatically know when card three ends, you go to card 
Four. At what time are you waking up now? It should be 5.30. Is it 5.15? 5.30. 5.15. Five One chapter was 5.5. Two chapters was 5.30. Three chapters, 5.15. So the next is? Five. Four. Four chapters, five at five. So that progression. So it becomes automatic. We are talking about obeying the rules. <laughs> Number two, the second principle is we are drawing from this scripture. Goes into strict training. It, this athlete goes into strict training. That's the second principle. What is the implication? It implies that he accepts and follows instructions that may be very tough. Before an athlete comes out and says, I will go to compete, he is saying, I know it is not easy, but I am willing to pay the price. Yeah. He accepts and follows instructions that may be very tough. Imagine CPR training, the challenger card. Already, some of us may be developing some negative attitude towards challenger card. You're wondering, challenger card, can we read without this thing? <laughs> <laughs> but but there are no shortcuts. You may be wondering, I can't even see some things. I don't know how to mark. <laughs> and the, the, the enemy will may come and whisper and tell you, yes, it's true, it's his thing. <laughs> Look at the way it has been designed. So the challenger card, the seven training ses uh, se sessions, which I'm already telling you, if you have missed one, please don't miss any other. Make sure you attend all of them. You, will, you are going to, to acquire enough to drive you because after seven months or eight months, after seven months, we will be done with you. We graduate you and we, are, we invite other people. So the question is, after you graduate, what will happen? Will you go back to sleep? <laughs> it's a discipline. I hope you are not praying and saying, when will this thing happen? <laughs> yes, it will come, it will come to an end. And chances are, you may also be, maybe when we finish, you will be avoiding us when we meet there. <laughs> because you may be tempted to say, well, but I will listen to the Fikawa. And the Yata. I'm not going to say my body, Mali. Because I love my son. Let this not bring an enmity. Please let's be friends. It was meant to, to unite us together. What is uh, application in CBR? It is, uh, we are saying, okay, I think we have done that. Let's go to principle number three. Beat the body and make it my slave. That is from verse 27. Paul is saying, no, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself, please don't have, work out, beat that body very well. Because this body is going to Hashem us in heaven. This body will not go to heaven. We are to beat it in order to feed the spirit. We are only housing it for a short time. It's temporary. I know we keep, we keep the, our body so well and make sure it is in good shape. And um, we forget the main thing. So the question is, how are you making your body compliant? Or you, you love yourself so much the Bible talks about the, what we call the cloud of witnesses. Those people who stood by faith. We know of these people in <coughs> Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. The Bible says, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their yes. testimony. It continues to say, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. In Hebrews 11, the Bible says these people, they saw their children being killed. They saw. And some of them 
The Bible says it was sealed into two. Why? The Bible gives an answer that they were looking forward for a better resurrection. That they had an opportunity to go back to the country where they came from. But they never. They were looking forward for a heavenly city whose architect is God. When we think about our journey of faith, friends, we can't joke with our Christian lives. We can't negotiate with our alarm. You can't think to snooze it. You will get out when you know, I want my godliness to stand out, to feed the spirit. Because this body at the end of the day, they will go back to where it came from, the dust. Now, um, I have talked much about the value of instructions, and um, I want to combine and look at the value of instructions and instructors. The scripture, the value of instructions and instructors. I think the scripture that you memorized, uh, you recited in um, Galatians, Galatians chapter 6, begins by saying, anyone, I had the recitation from different versions. This is NIV, uh, okay, NIV 1984, because and I read 2011 as a different um, wording. It says, anyone who receives instructions in the world must share all good things with this instructor. It is anyone who receives instructions. So these are instructions, these are instructions from who? Instructor. Now, instructions makes the training of oneself very easy. It makes the training. It also makes continuous self-evaluation and progress possible. Because when you follow instructions, you are able to know where you started and where you are and where you are going. Right now, I, I believe and it's my prayer, some of us in Exodus, I don't know how many have reached Leviticus. Are there people in Leviticus? <laughs> Oh, even numbers. Do you have numbers? Yes. Oh, good, I can see. <laughs> yeah, people are serious. People are reading the Bible. <laughs> you know, please, if you, if you are in Genesis, you don't need to scare it. You are, you are also a consistent Bible reader. You are the one chapter a so you can see some already people are reading the Bible. Yeah, please don't be left out. Yeah, let, let, let's, let's encourage. Somebody say that uh, if you can't walk, crawl. Uh, you know, if you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, just make sure that there is movement. You are moving, okay? We are not competing. Disciplines develop differently. And my point of focus is the value of instructions and instructors. And that's why we come on a monthly basis. We will never fail to come. Just to come, uh, encourage you, share a lesson, and we leave you to continue. We started, I think the first time we started this phone was full. You can see. <laughs> <laughs> so, we understand. <laughs> Discipline has a way of balancing things. Yeah, so I, I pray that now you who have come for the third lesson, <laughs> Uh, you, you are not on the way also. <laughs> Please remain. <laughs> so that uh, God um, continue to, to build us together. So you need to read and understand the procedure and instruction for developing discipline in the course, a reference card to make training enjoyable. Uh, I quote that I, have, I talked about that scripture. You can also read Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5. The Bible says whoever obeys his command and come to okay, whoever obeys his command will come to no harm. And the wise heart knows the proper time and procedure. For there is a proper time and procedure for every matter, though a man's misery weighs heavily upon him. Ecclesiastes 8:5. 8 verse 5. On, on instructors, are we together? Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 5. On the value of instructors, we say that your willingness to obey 
to obey them test your humility and they also inspire you to acquire discipline easily they may be discouraged when you don't do your best <clears throat> when you work hard to impress your instructors you also impress God you know what Hebrews 13 17 says the Bible says in Hebrews 13 17 obey your leaders and submit to their authority they keep watch over you as men who must give an account obey them so that their work will be a joy not a burden for that would be of no advantage to you to catch it it takes several weeks to chew it, it, it's a very tough time let me use simple animals like ants if you you cannot see an ant that goes alone either it is dead or it has just been left they move in groups right the animals the animals that I I had studied some times back in South America they are called bisons I love their character the oneness they have bisons you can go and check bisons are animals they normally graze together they don't graze like cows you know cows has no concern for each other but on here the importance of discipleship group training going and growing together a discipline forms faster when you come together for example we come here if we are remain with one student here i can tell you we will negotiate with that student we will not come we will place him in an online class at least to join the rest but we cannot come here because of one person <laughs> but because we are a group look at genesis chapter 11 verse 5 and 7 to 7 genesis uh, genesis <clears throat> chapter 11 verse 5 we know about the babylonians um, these people who are building the tower of babel the Bible says in verse 5, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the, the men were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. Their unity was not to glorify God. <laughs> it was negative. And imagine their unity prompted God to come and confuse them. And that's how, that's how today we can't understand each other. If I speak my language, you can't understand the things that are hidden. I believe when someone was picking a stone, the other one was cutting, there was no unity anymore because of the language. They could not understand each other. That nothing they planned in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4 to 12. The Bible says, A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. It says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. Two are better than one. And we, we, we know. The other scripture is Matthew 18, 18 to 20. Many times we normally pray this scripture. I hope. And believe you normally know where it is coming from. When we say that, again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for me, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. It is two or three, where two or three come, a complete fellowship is composed of two or three people when you meet together you say you are three don't postpone that district fellowship please continue it's a complete one <laughs> praise the lord <laughs> you know when you go and you're wondering eh, we are few let's do it let's wait for next week <clears throat> agreement invites god's help in a matter in hebrews 10 
24 to 25, the Bible says, And let us consider how we may spar one another all towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage each other all the more. As you see the day approaching. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. That's, brethren, encourage one another and excel in godliness. When we come together, you learn. The problem is there is a temptation for selfishness. There are people who always want to talk alone. They can't give you the attention. There are people who want to preach. You want to listen to them. And if you want to know people don't want to give you attention, you talk and they talk. Is there really a conversation there? Mm -hmm. Conversation is complete when you listen, someone is talking, and then you interject. Unless when you want to interject, you come in to add something. It means you are listening. So when we come together, this creator is encouraging us the need for meeting together. I don't know, that raises the question of, have you been meeting in your peer groups? <laughs> well, why? We need to be meeting regularly, or you fear each other. The need for meeting is you encourage one another, you correct one another, and even rebuke. In your group, you started together. How comes the member of your group is in the book of Exodus, and you are in Deuteronomy? <laughs> is, that, is that group really working? <laughs> I don't think there is love there. <laughs> person is, lag, is, is, is lagging behind yeah. and does not want to be confronted. Yeah. There is a confront. For us, we, we, we normally, we are involved in mentorship. We mentor youths and disciples. So many times, and the condition for mentorship for us is you must have finished CBR. You do CBR first so that we can speak the same language. <laughs> so many times when we meet, on our, we normally meet, meet on weekly basis on Tuesday evening. When we meet, the first thing is how far are you doing, how far are you in CBR? If you tell us, last week you told us I am in the book of Ruth. Three weeks you are telling us in the book of Ruth. <laughs> Ruth has only four chapters. <laughs> are you moving? <laughs> now, that is the importance of working together. When someone is sharing, you are wondering where. I need to wake up so that we can walk together. So working on a spiritual project with others invites divine strength that helps to conquer the most stubborn challenges. And that is why you have to stick to this class if you desire to form CBR discipline. You can't grow alone. You must desire to be attached in a group. Don't always listen to people's testimonies and you have never shared yours. Come and say, oh, that I mean, let me say it. You may say, it. you encourage someone. You may share testimony and there was someone who was discouraged only to realize he is better than you. And wondering, wait, hey, I am better, I am going to, I am going to struggle. He only buy as I did. Not, not, not bad in a way, but we are all struggling. That is the uniting factor for us. We are all on a journey. And therefore, that is why there is need for us to understand the, need, uh, the difference between meeting with God and building discipline. Are we together? Yes. You need to understand the difference between meeting with God. What does that mean? When you wake up in the morning, and you realize there is an emergency. Don't be discouraged that you do not read the Bible in the morning. Come, because God can be met anytime. CBR does not imply that God is only hard and met in the morning. What we mean is that we want to give ourselves to God when we are fresh and alert. Before we get involved in so many things. When you miss to read the Bible in the morning, chances are you may not read during the day. Anytime you, you postpone. But if that happens for one or two reasons, make sure you come and enjoy reading the Bible later. You can hear the Lord in the afternoon. You can hear the Lord in the evening. 
That is what Joshua 1 8 says. That do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. We can meditate on the word of God day and night. When you read in the morning, you will keep meditating and it sticks in your mind and you are able to put in practice. When you don't wake up, maybe the alarm left, left you, after alarm in the or whichever, feel discouraged. It is okay. Please feel so disappointed like how comes? You wake up and you are wondering, I thought it is, it is 5 and it is 8 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Feel disappointed about yourself, but make a resolve and say, tomorrow, I'll do something, I'll add more volume in my alarm, or even change the ringtone, and all those mechanisms. We have what we call very important truth that I would like us to, um, to look at as we finish this. Very important truth number two. We did number one in lesson one. Very important truth number two says, God has said this word in a way that makes it impossible to acquire any discipline without paying a price for it or keep it without becoming accountable to someone else. We are saying God has said this word in such a way that makes it impossible to acquire any discipline without paying a price. We are paying for everything. And that's why we say, train yourself to be godly. Godliness is not acquired without any effort. It's okay. God's grace is sufficient. God cannot send angels to come and wake you up to read the Bible. Who has been receiving angels? <laughs> Have you? <laughs> if you don't set Alan, it's... If you don't set alarm, the Lord. I am saying God has set this world in, um, in a way that makes it impossible to acquire any discipline without paying a price for it. Or keep it without being accountable to someone else. God has set this world in a way that makes it impossible to acquire any discipline without paying a price for it or keeping it without being accountable to someone else. We are social beings. We depend on each other. We can also be intentional now to, be, to depend on each other, even on spiritual matters. There is an aspect you don't understand. There is a scripture you don't understand, you can ask. Someone may be knowing it. There is something you are struggling, share. When someone entrusts you and asks you, please pray with me, don't wait until it becomes a testimony to thank God and you did not pray. You know, someone may tell you, okay, I'm not feeling well, my family is not doing well, please pray for us. After three weeks or one month, she comes and tells you, thank you for praying for us, and you're saying we thank God. And you didn't pray. <laughs> many, times we, many times we lie to each other. You didn't pray, but you are part of the glory. You are part of saying, yes, we thank God, and you didn't pray. You can be honest and say, okay, we thank God. I'm sorry, I, I didn't pray, I forgot. Because after all, we are, not, we are not answers of prayers. We only present. When someone sends me prayer, I can say, when someone, someone tells us, please pray with us. We normally, when my wife tells me, let's pray for her so she's not feeling well. We don't say, we will pray. We take that time because there is a possibility of forgetting. Even when I'm traveling, I see a message pray for us. I just pray right there. Yeah. So that I know I don't answer prayers. I'm only, I'm only inviting God's intervention. Someone has even, imagine someone has trusted you that you can actually pray. Some people go through tough times and they can't open their mouth. They are telling you, please, pray on my behalf. Present this need to God. Be faithful. That's a challenge. Godliness, it comes with a price. In this journey, when you read the Bible, when God gives you an insight, please share. Yeah. Bless us in that group. And we'll be willing to, to see and also be encouraged. You may say you share something that you have never learned. As we come to the conclusion, 
We normally take this lesson as a um, as the central part of the uh, of the training. We normally say this is the center. When you reach lesson three, we know you have made up your mind. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have some few things. Uh, we normally say recommitment to complete CBR course. Are you committed to finish CBR? Yes. Hey, are you committed? Yes. yes. There are some things I want to read. You please don't write this one. Uh, I will read. And if you agree, you can say yes. <laughs> I will read fast. <laughs> Listen, I will read everything without you responding, okay? Yes. So that you understand what you will be saying yes to. <laughs> because these are not these are not vows. <laughs> yeah, because we need to be very careful. It is normally just a recommitment to complete CBR course. After all, I, again, I will send you this lesson in PDF. You can still read, okay? Yes. Yeah. So, I understand there may be those who are listening online and they will want to get more uh, reading and understanding. This is what I want. I, want, I would like you to, to think and then we will stand up later when we will be saying yes, but I want you to understand first. <laughs> now, I understand that it is my responsibility to train myself to be godly. I also know now that the only way to cultivate discipline in Bible reading is to practice it consistently in a system of group accountability until it becomes part of my life. Therefore, I commit myself afresh to, we are saying, you will say yes if you believe and mean it. Allow me to read the seven. Let me read first. The first commitment is, I commit myself to remain a reliable member of this group. I commit myself to rise up early as per the training progression. I commit myself to read the required number of chapters, to hear God, and build my Bible reading capacity. I commit myself to attend all the remaining sessions of this course by overcoming hindrances. I commit myself to complete all the assignments in the CBR course faithfully. I commit myself to put into practice whatever the Lord convicts me to do through His Word. And lastly, I commit myself to keep letting others know that it is possible